to the cartoonist studio for another round of silliness and ridiculous stuff um it's been a fairly eventful week should i say my daughter got married my youngest daughter got married last friday and um i made a speech and a complete arse of myself of course uh, but that was it was a great day fantastic everyone enjoyed it they're happy and i think they're in mexico or brazil now or they're off somewhere anyway so that's lovely and uh, I'm back here in the studio. I've been working like mad trying to catch up with things, doing some comic book work for Rebellion Comics and cartoon strip for the Dalesman and pretty sure I'll be doing another Sherlock Holmes cartoon. So that's been kind of busy and I thought, hell, it's Friday. I haven't done the video. I haven't done the YouTube -y thing yet. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of action. Action is something I'm kind of known for. Should we say that's the one thing about me? But say, oh yeah, it, cartoons seem to come to life. I never knew it. It's not something I consciously did. It's just something that I do, and now I love it. And there should have been a few samples coming up around the screen of the kind of things that I've done. I've done so much. Those are just the ones I could find. So today we're talking about action, not just action, but how action affects things around it, and the things around it been affected. Uh, how they can make things look more action filled if you get what i mean if you don't well, watch the video it'll it'll be a bit more understandable then so without further ado let's go somewhere whichever way and uh, draw ourselves an action-packed cartoon shall we let's do that hello and welcome back to the cartoon studio this is take two you know i did a lovely picture i did i was very happy with it but unfortunately I didn't check the camera angles like the ad Egypt that I am. I was drawing up over here. I was having a great time up there. Lots of magical stuff was happening up there. But unfortunately, you could only see what was down here where nothing was happening except a blank piece of paper and toe from the character. <sighs> anyway, never mind. Action. Yes, let's do some action, shall we? Uh, I'm trying to remember what I said there. As I mentioned in the intro, a lot of action. It's not just uh, the the character. It's to do with um, the objects around. Or rather, that's what I. That's how I portray it. And I am sort of fairly well known for my ability to portray action. Uh, so technically, I should know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here long enough, you'll know that's rubbish. But, uh, anyway, so we're going to be drawing someone thumping, thumping at our table, thumping it with everything he's got. We smack a little belt. Right, so there we go. We're starting off now. We're starting off with, with, him, with him thumping the table. So there's his fist. And straight away, We're showing a part of action which I'll get back into. Well, maybe I'll discuss it now. Maybe I'll talk about it now. Right, there he is. There's his arm. There's his grimace. His gritted teeth. And the fist has come down. I'll just draw the rest of the body as I want to portray it. If you see me go... Uh, my arm go all weird. It's because I'm looking over at the phone and checking, making sure I've not made the same mistake twice. There goes the one leg. Up in the air. Right. Now we're going. Now we're going. The other arm is like so. Now I am going to be drawing action without any action lines. Nothing against action lines. Use them if you want. They're a great tool. Just about every cartoonist uses them. I don't always do that. Sometimes because I can do action. I was once told by an editor of a comic I work for. 
I have more action in my little finger than most other cartoonists have in their entire body. That was a lovely thing to hear, wasn't it? I was also told by an animating director that my still cartoons had more life in it than his animated movies. Wasn't that good? That was nice. They're all very nice things. I'm not, I'm not blowing me on trumpet. I'm just saying what people said. So you get the general idea is that actually, yeah, this is what I do. Action is my thing. And the way I portray it is not by necessarily um, going down the line of, of using a whoosh, you know, like a big, big swinging arc here with the word whoosh going in it, which works absolutely fine. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you how to do it all without any whoosh signs or or you know the sort of the powder puff things to show dust and what have you we'll show you how to do dust without those little cloud things and then by the end of it you'll get some idea of it's all about when you're drawing action it's not just the character it's everything around him or her or it depending on whether it's an animal or not even down to the nose the nose the flared nostril denotes a little bit of anger, creases above the eye. So I haven't finished that leg for a reason, because now he's hitting a table, right? Normal, oblong, desk type table. But what I do is to show the impact is I will have the desk bending. See? Like so. Now it's a three-dimensional object, so turn it into a three-dimensional object just as soon as you've got your shape. Okay, now it's come right up in the air. This is the top part, the top part of the desk. Now the reason why I mention that is that we're just about to draw the bottom half, the bit that it normally sits on sits upon now it's it's been liberated shall we say so let's draw it coming out like so um only ever so slightly this one's curving in the air there that will mirror it slightly and then draw the rest of it coming off here We're looking down slightly, so use a bit of perspective. I'll put that behind us. Boom. Actually, no, I'm not happy with that. It's not quite what I wanted. That's not what I was after. So let's give this a bit more of a bend for a start. Thump. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, also, what we'll now do is we will. Eat. That's it. We will. Oppositize. Oppositize? Sounds like a George W. Bush word, doesn't it? Well, oppositize it. There. So, by oppositizing, I mean you've got the table. That's going up in the air. That's coming this way. And I will extend it slightly as well. Then we go. So th this table is still pretty much the same size. I haven't really changed it that much. Okay, we all all right with this now? Still making sure here that I'm not disappearing off the page and doing all sorts of interesting things over here again that you can't see. Well, I can say they're interesting because you can't see them. Right. And that's going like that. So let's give that a slight curve as well. Oh, it's so difficult when I'm giving instructions because normally I just do this without thinking. 
See, I'm bending the whole table. The whole thing is moving. Everything is part of the action. Now, hmm, yeah, I will, yeah. I'll do the legs as well, or, or the base part of it. And that's the one thing I want to mention, is the, the top half of the table. That's a bit thick, actually. The top half of the table is... Um, No, actually, that is right. It's the bottom one's too thick, is it? All right, just let me get this little bit happier. Happier in my little world. Yeah. Um, this table, when it lays down flat, should hang over by here and over here somewhere. I know some tables do run flat, but for the sake of this picture, and it's going to be an old-fashioned type desk, old-fashioned in the respect that uh, how they were say 30 years ago why because it's my youtube channel i'll damn well choose the time era if i want to stick a dinosaur behind that i will now i'm gonna once again just block this whole thing off as though it's uh just I don't know, uh, a plinth, if you like. But it's not going to be, because I'm going to do that. I once again follow the curve of this line. I do the same thing there. Now, the reason why I did it in a rectangle, or you know, a plinth, if you like, is because... When you do that and then cut into it, you know it's it's going to be exactly right. If I just did that and try to get that one exactly the same as that, it may not it may not work out. So trust me, I know what I'm talking about. And I'll just to prove it twice, just to rub it in. These uh, these discs used to have like a, a panel effect on the front and sometimes on the sides. Now I'm going to do the the paneling on the front of it. We'll give it, we'll split it into two, shall we say. And the one on the side will just be one. So we'll do that quickly now, just to get that out of the way. Using the same, you know, imagine it going like that. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be the same size, but also follow the curve of the table above and below. Now to turn this one into two, all I do is that and slightly over at an angle there. I would never normally rub it out with what I'm drawing because I know what I'm doing. But for the sake of effect, there you go, you've got two panels and they are exactly the same size. Um, if you, now the next stage is to denote he's banged it down, so he's hit it down. It's The impact has gone to the bottom, but the bottom uh, kinetic energy, I think, or whatever you want to call it, is now going to force that back up again, which will then bring that down. So that's, he's hit it, that's gone up, the table's gone down, it's coming back up again. So we'll just give it a little bit of shadow here. Now it's coming up at an angle, right? So we're actually further away from this leg than we are there. So when I finished, you will see that and shade it all in. That's the other important bit. Bring it out, so that's right, yeah, bring it out a bit. You will see this now up in the air slightly. Now so far I've avoided any of the uh, the lines that go like that or like that or any of the cloud puffs to show that he just banged a table. What I will what I will do um, this is the only um, concession I think I'm going to give to those. I'm going to give it an impact smack. That's all I'm going to do. It's the only one of those things that I'm going to do. And then a little bit of shadow underneath there. Because when I do this now with the dust mots it really it really brings it to life 
So that's why I did that. OK, so no one hits a table when there's nothing on it. Oh, by Jove, no, they don't. They hit things when there's stuff on it. And it's that, it's those objects that will really show the movement. Uh, oh, before I go any further, this table had to be attached somehow, didn't it? So let's have some little nails or screws or whatever they are coming down there. Same thing on this side. And then we'll 3D eyes. <laughs> another, another George W. Bush word in there. 3D eyes. And little holes where the nails would go. Even if you can't see any more nails, they still would have holes. So put them in. There you go. Now, you hit the table, and let's just say that there's a computer, a laptop here. So the laptop's going to go straight up in the air, so it's going to go up in an arc. So you imagine there's your computer, it's sort of that shape, it goes up in the air, it starts to turn, doesn't it? So when you're imagining the line of trajectory up to about here, say we'll have it about here, then it's going to be sort of at this angle. There, and then we'll have it, there's the, the lid sticking up, and then, yeah, there you go. So it's at that kind of an angle. Once again, I'm doing all these reverse lines and reverse curves, sorry, shall we say. And we'll give it some cartoon keys. Right, there's your basic laptop shape. You want to put an insignia on there, you can Apple been eaten, that's fine. Now to show it's moving again, it's actually connected by wires, so you get the wires like that. Now I haven't done a line like that, but by these lines going up, sneaking up after it, that really gives it some action. So now the computer's up, up in the air, the laptop's up in the air, just um, make sure that's right. Um, what else can we have? Oh, maybe maybe he's got a book in there. Um, I don't know. A, a book on tax accounting or something. So that's been resting up, standing upright on his desk there. And it's hit it. Now, this end hasn't gone up as high as that end. So whatever's on that end has really been thrown somewhere. This one is raising. So it's probably about up here. And once again, follow its line of trajectory. That's the book. It would go like that. So there we go. Draw it in a block shape. You can do fancy things to it afterwards. There's its shape. Now, we'll have this. I'm going to have a page coming up. One page lifted slightly higher than the rest. And then the cover. Because the book would open slightly as it was raising in the air at the top bit anyway and then the bottom bit slightly open again not much just a little bit and there you have it you've got a book flying in the air now you start to see so far we've not used one uppy downy ziggy zaggy line one sort of puffy smoky line, nothing like that, but stuff's moving. And if you give him, give the, sorry, not him, sorry, give the book um, a bookmark. So we'll do it then. Well, one of those, one of those um, thread bookmarks. Let's do that. Exactly the same effect as the wire. Is it snaking? Now, he had a cup of tea here. Now the cup of tea is going to be lighter, or coffee, the cup of tea is lighter than these. So he had it there. So that's going up in there, up here. That's going to be up higher than anything else. Now the beauty about doing a cup of tea or coffee or anything like that is, um, is once you've got yourself a shape, put a little love heart on there, it kind of like goes against what's actually happening. He's furious. The last thing he is, is feeling the love. So that goes up there and we get to draw hot liquid.
coming out. So that's up in the air. Now what could be over here that is lightweight? What can I have that's over there? I suppose maybe... Oh, what can we do? We'll have a little... I'll tell you what, I'll just strengthen a few lines whilst I have a little think about that. Uh, strengthen them, strengthen them, sure. I'd say, any answers, any any ideas, stick them in the comments box, but it'll be too late, so I'll join it by then, won't I? Gee, an idiot as I am. Idiot. We'll have the other part of his trousers there, and we'll just shade those in. Once again, normally I wouldn't do that at the penciling draw at the penciling stage. Because I just go straight into it because I know what I'm doing. Uh, probably wouldn't have all that there, just that there. Right, and then there's the other leg here, which is bent under. Now, if it's bent under, chances are around here, it would have been pulled up slightly from his leg. So let's show a little bit of leg. Show a little bit of leg. I'll get banned you once now. All the JK Rowling haters will be after me. You said something sexist. You said you showed leg. Disgusting. You should be hung, drawn and quartered. Right. Um, yeah. So that's that. I still can't think what, what to do. What could be good to have flying over there? I know. Let's have a portrait. Let's have a little photo frame, shall we? Are we still in picture? Now, it's been catapulted, so it's all... Over it goes. And it's one of those ones that stands on the desk, so give it on, stands on the desk. So give it a little stand. And maybe, maybe in your world, lives a happy little face. Really, Bob Ross. I love Bob Ross. Who doesn't? Right, there you go. So actually, I'm going to prove this even, I'm going to show this even more now and have it even higher off the ground by just extending the shadow. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Uh, maybe I'll have the chair. He scooted it back so much so that it's... in the air a little bit. Um, I think we'll just give him the basic handles and yeah we won't get too fancy on the chair it's just the basic shape. Now they come with obviously the, uh, the stand with the wheels on so I'm drawing it here so as I can get the angle that I want show the action and then this can come up here see by knowing the action I'm actually it, it helps it helps for me to know where that's going so as I can get this bit right if you understand what I mean and then because it's moving that way we'll have the wheels come in slightly delayed that's gone. The wheels are still a little bit behind. Once again, shows action. Every little bit. Well, this is this is what I do anyway. This is how I. This is how my mind thinks. It's never a. It's never a good thing for me to work to tell you exactly how my mind works. It's a bit of a bit of a dark area. Okay. And then you can another way of showing. Well, so we'll finish this off first. We've got the, the armrest there, haven't we? Almost completed. Just complete it off now. Uh, still in picture? Yeah, still in picture. And there we go. This is pretty much it. Mr. Frustration has vented his spleen, if you like, 
over something, probably computer based, and the chair has flown back. Now to show it's up in the air, you do the shadow, the shadow is slightly delayed. If you want to show someone hovering, like you want to show, I'll, put, I'll do it with a um, Tell you what, let's do the proper one. If you're doing a ball and it is moving at speed, right, just draw the shadow a little bit behind. If you're drawing a ball that is hovering in the air, then keep the shadow directly underneath it. See? Shows movement. So there we go. There we go. There's the There's the axis in. So this is coming slightly away from it. So the, the shadow has been dragged behind it. Right, there you go. There's the picture. No zoomy sign. No puffs of smoke. No little parentheses coming down. You've used the wire for the computer to do that. And also think the wires tend to go behind, don't they? So make sure you keep that right. This is up in the air slightly. That's been pushed back. His book's up there. Oh, give it a... Give it one of these. And then a bit of writing on there. His cup's up in the air. Maybe he's got some spilling out there as well. And uh, he's bent over and he's angry. He's had enough. Something's annoyed him. Thick his arm slightly. His fist... Hasn't gone down like that. He's gone down and his arm's gone up in the air. So the fist is now exaggerated. It's all there, you know. Right. If you like this kind of content, 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 if you like this kind of content, and I seriously doubt your common sense, if you do, then like and subscribe. It helps grow the channel. It does so much of the algorithms and YouTube get all excited and they, they have sort of fevered fits, fevered fits of excitement they do. And they contact me and tell me that I'm clever and they're going to put me higher up the ladder, which should be rung two out of 840 million the way things are going. But I want to grow this channel and the best way to do that is to, is to let everyone know about it. Share it. Share it on your socials, as they say. Um, and we'll get more people up here and it will grow because it's not growing fast enough for me at the moment. It needs to grow faster. So I need your help. I am asking you for your help. Please heed my worries and concerns. Yeah, a few more dots down there of some dust. And um, next time, I think we're doing a single panel. Um, I'm, I'm working on doing the Calvin Hobbes comic strip. You know, one of those things, if I drew dot, 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 I've already done Andy Cat, Wizard of Id and Hagar the Horrible. Uh, there's there's a playlist on my channel page, so you can see those. Uh, Calvin Hobbes is next. Um, but I shall try and do another one next week. Don't hold your breath. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to get them more regular. But you will definitely have one every fortnight. Okay. Well, thank you once again very much for your time. I'm going to go away now and ink this at high speed. And you won't see me lying in the corner with a damp cloth on my head, a fevered mass of energy. And we'll stick some owl music on there as well. And, um, yeah, see you next week. And thank you once again for your time, your valuable time. Your presence is very much appreciated. Thank you and goodbye for now.